Thank you for listening to Liberty Christian Center's podcast. Let's join Pastor Paul Carlson for today's message. Red letter is what we've called this series, and and uh, it's basically words about words Jesus spoke and stories about his life, looking at things from from the Jesus perspective. And you know, starting this new year, let me read a scripture to you. This will tell you where we're going. Luke eighteen one. He said he spoke a parable to them to this end. And here's what he said next. He said that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, you know, when I talk about prayer, you know, people get different ideas. All right? You out there this morning? I'll tell you one thing. When I talk about prayer, it gets quiet in the house. But, you know... Right now, you know, at this point in, in my life, I'm involved with four couples that are going to get married in the next months, and I'm doing premarital counseling. And we have a, we've got a book that we use for premarital counseling, and uh, it's an alpha book. And, and the very first lesson that we have is, is you know, I feel it, it runs through the whole thing that we do, and it's about communication. And, and um, I know this. As a pastor, you know, that, that, you know, I love doing premarital counseling and talking to people, but sometimes people come to me for postmarital counseling. And I would say this, I'm not a real good, you know, statistic guy, but I would say at least 90% of the problems that come to me and Dana, postmarital counseling kind of stuff, break down to its communication. And it sounds like such a simple thing. You know, I sit, I sit here doing the premarital stuff with these couples, you know, and, and I mean, you know how it is? They're like, they're goo-goo-eyed and, oh, you know, this, this, oh, oh, they're so wonderful. And, and you say, well, listen, you know, you guys got to keep talking to each other. And it seems like, goodness, come on, keep talking to each other. You see these couples out to eat, you know, you know who they are. They're the, they're the, the man and, or the, the guy and the girl that are sitting there talking to each other. Okay, you know, whereas Dana and I, who spend every minute together almost, we go there and we're, we're checking Facebook while we're at the restaurant, you know. Oh, it's, uh, yeah. Did you see that thing on Instagram? Wow. You know, are we bad or what? No, we talk all the time. We talk all the time. But, but you know, it's so important to talk. So important to talk. Actually, Dana and I, we do, we do communicate about, about all kinds of stuff, everything, you know. I come home, if I have been away from her, I, I, I tell her things that I've gone through because I want her input. She, she's the gift God's given to me, and she speaks into my life. And communication, I tell you, when communication breaks down, it all crumbles. It all crumbles. So, you know, I'm talking about prayer. And I realize I'm talking to a group of people here. Man, you guys are tuned in. You do pray. But you know what? What I've found over the years is when somebody starts talking about something that I'm into, for instance, someone says, well, we're going to talk about new creation realities. Now, I've studied that stuff for 30 years or more. But you know, when I hear somebody say that, here's what happens to me. Can you see this? I go, wow. You know, it's like I'm I'm up on my toes. I'm like, all right, come on, tell me. Even if I don't agree with the guy, I'm like, tell me more. I want to hear what you're saying. Because it's like it sparks something in me. Sparks something in me. You know, I, I've heard this, that, that it's, it's in some places, when you talk about prayer, that there's people out there that have never had their prayers answered. And that's a sad thing. I, I, know I look out here, you know, I, I know so many of you, and I hear things. I, that's one of the great things about being pastor. I hear, I hear the good and the bad, you know. But I hear, I hear people call up and say, man, God just came through, you know. I prayed this and this happened. I was reading, reading something. Our accountant had something on Facebook just yesterday. He said that someone had come to him that was, was in this terrible state, sickness. They were going to die. And they prayed together and went back to the doctor and everything was gone. He was in remission. I was like, man, that's prayers being answered. That's life happening, you know. And if there's something that the enemy would attack in our lives, it would be the communication we have with our Heavenly Father. 
So as we go into this new year, I want to look at what Jesus had to say about prayer. In this first verse we read, he said this, men ought always, and, and ladies, he didn't exclude you from this. He was talking about human beings. He was saying, listen, guys, you ought always to pray and not to faint. And let me say this, that prayer, true communication with the Lord will make you strong. It won't wear you out. Okay? Prayer will not wear you out. It'll build you up. As a matter of fact, when you spend time in prayer, it's evident. You'll become nicer, kinder. You know, in fact, you don't need to tell someone if you've spent, you know, three hours in prayer. You don't have to come out and say, well, I spent three hours praying today. It'll be evident. It'd be like if you fell into a vat of perfume and you walked out of that place, you wouldn't have to go telling people, I fell into a vat of perfume. They'd say, we know. We know. All right? I was being nice. I said perfume. We could have been many vats. But, but there's a lingering air about you when you spend time in God's presence. Okay? And, you know... It's what we crave. It's what we desire. It's what we want in our life. It's the kind of people we want to be. We want to be people that when we enter the room or leave the room, there's an atmosphere of heaven that we've brought in. And I tell you what, we leave it in the place that we go. And it doesn't come. It doesn't come any other way than spending time with him. Spending time with him. Getting to know him. You know, I, I, I'm all into titles the last few years, figuring out titles. You know, I get a lot of inspiration from Stephen here, Pastor Stephen. You know, but, and I've had about three or four titles of this message today. You know, I was going to say, well, prayer is doing the Judas Smith thing. Prayer is, love is, Jesus is. You know, but, but I really, I think another title for this message could be keeping your connection. Keeping your connection. You know, that's really what this is about, is keeping your connection. You know, you know, if it's a husband and wife, I'll tell you what, if a husband and wife, you know, quit talking to each other, I'm telling you what, the connection is broken. A simple thing. It's so simple, it, it escapes us sometimes. But just speaking words to each other, it connects you. It connects you. You know... Okay, I'm going to go on. Jesus said these things. So here's another one. Let me read the scripture first. In Mark 5, verse 30, there's a scripture. I'm pulling it, the scripture out of a story that many of you are familiar with. But listen to what this says. It says that Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? Isn't that an amazing scripture? Another version, uh, the 20th century translation, said it this way. Jesus turned around and said, Who made a demand upon my power? Who made a demand upon my power? That's probably my favorite rendering of it. But the story here that we're taking this out of is this woman that, that fought through the crowd to get to Jesus, and she, she said this with her own mouth. She said, if I can just get there and touch his clothes, she said, I'll be made whole. And it took determination to fight through the crowd, but she got to Jesus, and she just touched the hem of his garment, and the power of God flowed into her body, and she was healed, healed completely, made whole. And, and an interesting thing about this woman, you know, we find this in, in, in the scriptures here, that she'd had this, this thing for 12 years. They called it the, an issue of blood. She'd had it for 12 years. And I find that when you've had something for any length of time, let alone 12 years, it's like you identify with it. It becomes one with you and you become one with it. You know what I'm saying? It's like it, it just is like a part of you. You know, I, I use this example when I was in Haiti, you know, for, for four years, I was a missionary. And, and then we came home, Dana and I moved back to the States, and, and it, was, it was like an identity crisis. I came back, and I was no longer Missionary Paul, and again, not that I ever called myself Missionary Paul. But there was an identity thing with it, you know, of that's who I was. It's, it was my life. 
and, and I had to see that there's a new path God's taken me on that's, that's the one I'm supposed to be on right now. And I had to, I, it was like I had to get a hold of that whole thing. But this woman had this, this condition for 12 years, but she said, I'm, I'm going to get free of it. I don't care if I've had this thing for 20 years. I'm going to get through, and I'm going to touch his garment, and I'm going to be made whole. Has anything been hanging on to you? All right, listen to what I want to say about it. This woman touched his garment and healing power came out of him. But I'm telling you this, that prayer is our avenue to touch his garment and let the power come into us. Just as much as she fought through the crowd and touched him physically, when you pray, you come in contact with the Most High God. And you make a demand upon his power. So prayer isn't so bad, is it? All right, here's a few more things. Prayer is grounded in the Word of God. In John 15, verse 7, Jesus said this. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you desire and it'll be done for you. Is that amazing? Is that, can that even be so? He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. Uh, I like the, the Kenneth Weiss translation there. He said it like this. He said, if my words find their home in you. My words find their home in you. You know, let him move right in. Man, let his words find their home in you. You know, let him just come on, lay back in the lazy boy chair and say, yeah, bring him some iced tea. Yeah, make yourself at home, word. Have your way in me. So Jesus said that when that happens, I'm telling you what, in prayer, prayer is grounded on the word. You know, it's an amazing thing to even just take the Word of God and instead of just reading the Word, talk to God about it. Do you ever do that? Do you ever just take the Word and let it be a path of conversation with God? You know, again, I'm, I'm giving you my whole premarital uh, message here, but when you do four uh, different couples at the same time, you end up talking premarital all the time. You know, it's just going to come out of you. But, but you know, uh, years ago, I remember Dana and I were at a, pre, uh, at a premarital counseling. No, we weren't there. We were at a marriage retreat, which, by the way, side note, we've got a great year coming up. We do have a marriage retreat again in the spring. We've got some speakers coming in. This is not announcement time, but I throw them anyway. We've got David Holland coming this year. How many remember David? David's, a, you know, he's on our, been on our board since day one, and he's a, a writer and a minister, and he's, 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 he's one of my favorite speakers. Uh, later in the year, we've got Keith Hershey, the most honorable Reverend Keith Hershey will be with us, and we've got the date set down, and it'll be a grand time. We love having Keith and Heidi. Keith, I don't know if Heidi's coming or not, but I'll tell you what, it'll be good. If you've, if you've ever heard Keith, you know, again, one of my favorites, and you'll want to hear him again, and if you haven't heard him, you're in for a treat. So what I was saying is that Dan and I were at a marriage retreat years ago, and we, we bought this book, and the book was called simply talk it wasn't called simply it just said talk to me talk to me and you know what a great book and the whole book the one we got originally had either 14 or 1500 questions that you could ask someone who's important to you you know and and you know again Dan and I we'd been married five six years when we got this thing but we just decided that every night when we went to bed we'd take turns and would each ask one another a question out of this book and we did this for the longest time and and it was amazing what things opened up it wasn't like we were reading a book to each other we were using that book as a as a path to to stir up conversation and we were connecting by doing that well what a way to connect with God you say I don't know what to pray well take your, your Bible time read it but don't just read it talk to him about it you might want to say hey what did you mean when you said that you know, one great thing to tell them is, is what is that, what you said there, what does that mean to me? Wow. Let him show you. I'm telling you, good stuff. Good stuff. All right, so we're talking about prayer. Matthew 26, 41. Jesus said this. Again, Jesus' words. He said, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Has anybody ever had trouble with your flesh being weak? Is anybody out there human? You guys are still alive? All right. You know, I mean, I just came, we just came through the holidays. 
And, and oh, I'm telling you, talk about your flesh week. My flesh is smart, though. My flesh knows where every treat in the house is, you know? And, and we don't, we're, Dana and I typically don't, we're trying to not eat sugar, you know? We don't usually do that, except at the holiday time, we figure we're having to cheat. I tell you, my flesh knew there was these pretzels in the freezer with chocolate on them and M&Ms stuck in the middle, and I'm telling you what, it would just call me. They would call me, they'd say, Paul, you're there. I felt it my responsibility because no one was eating them but me. <laughs> Here's what Jesus said. He said, guys, you're living in a fallen world. There's temptations, and temptations come to everybody. But he's saying this. This is a big key. He says, prayer will make you strong. Prayer makes you stand up on the inside. Prayer enables you to face the world and, and not be phased by whatever's out there, even chocolate-covered pretzels with M&Ms. Don't tell Dane I preached this this morning. Yeah, hey, no, yeah. All right, Matthew 18, 20. This is what prayer is. This is what Jesus talked about when he talked about prayer. These are just things. I'm probably not going to hit everything Jesus said. I mean, that, that is really tough to have an all-inclusive message. Everything Jesus ever said about prayer right here in the next 30 minutes. Yeah. Well, hey, these are things Jesus said about prayer. Matthew 18, 20. It says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm there in the midst of them. I'm there in the midst of them. So prayer is entering into the presence of God. Now, you say, well, I don't know if I have two or three people. Well, the good news for you is that Jesus is there if you come by yourself, too. It's great. I love to pray with other people. There is a power in corporate prayer. There's a dimension in it, but I'm telling you what, probably some of the best prayer times I've ever had have been just me and Jesus talking. But when you pray, you enter into his presence. Let me give you another scripture, Jesus' words, Revelation 3, verse 20. Well, how could this be Jesus' words? It's not in the four gospels. Well, Jesus is talking all through the Bible, but here in Revelation is some Jesus quote. He said this, he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come into him and dine with him and he with me. Now, I, I remember thinking of this verse, you know, for, for a long time I thought of this verse like this. I thought this was Jesus talking to the world. This was Jesus talking to the people that aren't born again. And what he was saying is, hey, I'm standing at the door of your heart, knock and open the door and I'll come in. But the reality is the context of this, these words are found in a message he gave to the church, to people that are born again. And that's what he said. He says, behold, I'm standing at the door of your heart, and I'm knocking. If you'll open the door, I'll come in and sup with you. One time I remember I was working this job over in St. Paul, and I, was call, I called Dane up, and, and, and I said, hey, you know, how you doing, kid? You know, talked and stuff. And I said, well, I think I'm going to go pray. And, and I, you know, she'd sent, she was so good, she'd send cookies with me back then to work. So I, I'm sitting there with chocolate chip cookies in my stash. I said, Dane, I think I'm going to go eat those cookies and pray. And she says, Paul, that doesn't sound very spiritual. I said, Dana, I'm totally in line with the word. He said, if I opened the door, he'd come in and sup with me. I said, me and Jesus, we're on our way for chocolate chip cookies. Here we go. Can you tell I've had sugar this week? Everything I talk about is cookies, caramels. Yeah. It's a new year, new day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so prayer is entering into the presence of God. Prayer is spending time with him. It's fellowshipping with him. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 9, the apostle John, you know, John was a character. He was full of the love of God. He was full of the confidence we're talking about this morning because he knew God loved him. He knew Jesus loved him. And, and they had exiled John, and he was on this island by himself. And he said here in verse 9, he said, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom, 
and patience of Jesus Christ. I was on the island that's called Patmos, and that's where he was. And he was there for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. They couldn't shut the guy up. They exiled him. And, and then in verse 10 is where I'm going. It says this. He says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a voice, and it sounded like a trumpet. <laughs> I like that. So Jesus talking to him. He, he sounded like a trumpet. But uh, here's what he said. He said, as it was the Lord's day. He said, physically, I was on the island of Patmos. But he said, in the spirit is where I went. In the spirit is where I went. Well, that's his way of saying, he says, what I did is I entered into the presence of God. Wherever you're at, you can be exiled on an island, okay? Drinking coconuts, and you can enter into the presence of God. You can be living in Menominee. You could be living in Glenwood City, and you can step into the presence of God. You can be more aware of him than you are your surroundings. So, you know, and, and Jesus, you know, this is like a prayer time with John. He says his voice sounded like a trumpet. Reminds me, you know, one time way back before I was even a Christian, I had one of them Pastor Stephen moments where I entered, I entered into a church. And it was a big church. It was in downtown Minneapolis. And, and it was kind of, a, kind of a big hippie church, you know, so I felt like it was okay going in. And I remember I went there and... I was just trying to see what they're all about, you know. I wasn't saved at all, you know. And, and I sat there in the pews, and they had worship time, and it was pretty cool. You know, it was nice music. And, and uh, then when worship was over, there's this guy about three rows in front of me, and he blew his nose, and it sounded like a trumpet. <laughs> and this little kid was probably about three years old, was sitting directly in front of me, he stood up, and at the top of his voice, he said, Mom, Mom, who's blowing the horn? <laughs> and I don't know what the guy said, the preacher said the whole service, because I, I couldn't get a hold of myself. I was laughing so hard. And every time I'd get a grip on myself, I'd look down the row, and there's this other guy that would just start laughing. <laughs> and I'd lose it, and he'd lose it, and goodness sakes. <laughs> anyway. I don't know if that's really spiritual to go from, hey, things happen in church. If you can't laugh in church, man, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. If you can't have fun in church, good night. I'd never have any fun. <laughs> uh, don't get me going. All right. All right. Uh, John 14. John 14, verse 13. Jesus' words about prayer. Prayer is, get this, is joining forces with God to carry out his will on the earth. That's what prayer is about. Prayer is just not some mamby, pamby thing. It's not some weak thing. Prayer is coming in contact with the Most High God. Prayer is going forth and, and establishing his will on the earth. You know, some of the biggest heroes in the kingdom of God are unseen to the most people, you know? But they're people that have gotten a hold of this concept of talking to God and praying things out. You know, I, I, I think back on my life, and, and uh, I know that I, I came in contact with God because people prayed for me. And, you know, I, I, I actually preached my dad's funeral many years ago. And, and uh, I remember saying this at the funeral that, that, you know, my dad was like a prayer warrior, you know. He'd get people on his list and he wouldn't sh you couldn't shake them from. And, and uh, I knew that growing up because I'd hear him. And when I was, you know, at the end of my rope, I remember calling him up one day. You think I'm calling him up to tell him to pray. I called him up and said, would you please quit praying? I said, I know you're praying for me, and it's making me miserable. I said, would you please quit? Prayer has power. I remember one time, Dana and I had a lady on our target. It was our, one of our next-door neighbors back in Minneapolis. She lived across the street from us, and she was a young single mom, I'd never met her, but her daughter would come over to our house, kind of like Pastor Stephen used to come over to our house and hang out. And so we had influence with the daughter, but we'd never met her. And I remember one day, so we prayed for her, but one day we noticed that her cat had gotten out of the house. 
and, and she wasn't home. And the cat had crawled up the back tree in the backyard. And so we call, I called the fire department. I thought, that's what you did. And they said, oh, we don't do that. <laughs> so I said, my goodness, Dana, what are we going to do here? And so then I thought of this guy I know that was from our church that I knew he had like ladders and stuff. So I called, his name was Leo. So I called up Leo. I said, Leo, you want to do something with me? And he goes, yeah, yeah, what do you got? He was always up for adventure. And he came over and we crawled up in that tree and got the cat down, put it in our garage and kept it till she got home. And then we called her up and said, by the way, we got your cat. You know what it was? It was a door into her life. And then it was just a, a little time after that, Dana's in the, the women's room at church doing whatever the women do, but I think she was doing something, makeup or something in the mirror, and she looked, and there, there's our neighbor standing behind her. She turned around and said, hey, you know that, that lady committed her life to Christ, started coming. She told us one time she had a boyfriend that would come over, and he had a, a red pickup. And we didn't know his name either, so we called him Big Red. <laughs> it, was our, it was our code name for this guy. We told, her, her, we told the neighbor this later when we got to know her better, and she, she thought that was hilarious. But one time, we were having a, a prayer meeting at our, in our living room of our house. And uh, we just at one moment, I remember it was right at 8.30. I don't know why I know that, but I do. I, I, I guess I know why. But anyway, we just said, listen, we're praying for our neighbor. I said, get all the prayers together and we just we just reached our hands out and we prayed for this lady and and the next week we saw her and she goes hey I saw all the cars over at your house the other night I said yeah she goes what were you doing right at 8 30 I said we were praying for you she goes I knew it she said I told Big Red they're praying for us right now <laughs> <laughs> Your prayers make a difference. Your prayers are joining forces with God. John 14, did I ever read that scripture? It says, and whatever you ask in my name, that will I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. I'll do it. Wow, isn't that amazing? Then in Matthew 7, verse 7, it says this. It says, ask. Can you say ask? He says, ask. How simple is that? He says, ask, and it'll be given to you. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it'll be opened. Then he goes on, and he tells a story that gives us a concept that we should carry about God. He said this. He says, if any of you fathers, is there any fathers out there today? If any of you fathers have your child come to you, and they ask you for a piece of bread, are you going to give them a rock? And say, chew on the rock? No, you're not going to do that. Or if they say, give me a fish, your kid says, hey, I'd like a fish. You know, you're not going to give him a snake and say, go play with that. That's just natural dads. He says, well, man, if that's how natural dads are, how much more is your heavenly father going to hear you when you pray? But he says, you got to ask. You got to ask. There's something about prayer, and it is that you've got to ask. You got to you got to speak it out. John Wesley, you know, a famous Christian, uh, started the the uh, founded the Methodist Church. Wild evangelistic type preacher. He said this one time. He said that that it seems that God can do can do nothing on the earth unless a man prays. He didn't say God won't do. He said it seems God can do nothing in the earth, except a man pray. Do you see how important prayer is? Do you see how far-reaching prayer is? Do you see why I called my dad up and said, Dad, will you please quit praying? You know, and I didn't realize in dad language that meant beef it up. <laughs> that meant call everybody you know and have them all pray. It was only a few months until I got born again because I, I, I couldn't, couldn't outrun them prayers. Parents, can I tell you something? You have tremendous power available to you in your prayers. Yeah. Parents, moms and dads, man, when it comes to your kids, you have, you have like authority. It's like you have, I'm, I'm not saying the kind of authority where you can just make them do anything, 
But I'm saying you have authority where you can open and rain down the power of God in their life. You know, there, are, there were times when if you'd have looked at me when my dad was praying, it didn't look like his prayers were working. But inwardly, God was working. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't think you're not being effective. Revelation 5.8, another pr- uh, insight, another scene where the curtain is pulled back and we're seeing what's going on here in heaven it says when he took the book the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors which are the prayers of the saints i'm telling you you can pray out the future you can pray out you know dana i hear her all the time praying you know she used to pray you know, for the girls, you know, we have two girls. She'd pray for them and their husbands, to, you know, when they weren't married, when they were like 10. It seems so weird. What do I mean? Praying for their husbands? They're only 10. I haven't let anybody date them. Come on. Hey, no. And, and <laughs> but, but, but she'll pray now for like the grandkids. Grandkids. She's gone beyond grand dogs to praying for grandkids because their kids both have dogs. So there's grand pups in our household. But your prayers pray out the future. They pray out the future. They pave the road for you to walk on. They pave the road for people to walk on. You know, I, I always wonder when I see God do things. I, 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 I often look back at where I come from and the people that I knew growing up. And I hear about people that get born again. And I think, well, who was praying for them besides me, maybe? You know? Uh, I'll, I'll go back. Can I tell this story? I got time. There was a guy, I, I was going to tell this earlier, but there was a guy that uh, when I first got born again, God led me to go witness to this old friend of mine. You know, let God lead you. Let him show you who to, who to tag. You know, always have someone on your radar that you're, you're praying for, that you're looking for inroads in their life. But I remember there's this one guy that, that I knew you know, he was an old friend and went to school with him. And he was in the, the hospital lockup, you know, for, for uh, nervous breakdowns mentally. He'd, he, tried, he tried to commit suicide, okay? And he'd, he was kind of an extender in there. He, he was there for quite a while. And uh, I went to visit him. And I remember I, I pulled a verse. You know that God will bless you even when you pull a verse out of context? Keep your heart right. So I use that very verse that I was telling you about, you know, that he stands at the door and knocks if anyone hears his voice. And so I, I told him, I said, well, God's right here. Jesus is here right now. I said, he's knocking on the door of your heart. And it was, you could sense the presence of God in the place. And you know what? He got saved. He, got, he, 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 he recognized the love of God. And, and uh, he got born again. And three weeks later, he died. You know, he went to heaven. Years later, you know, I didn't really have the kind of connection where I knew his family, you know. I, I didn't go to his house, like, growing up or anything like that. So I, didn't, I only knew him. I didn't know his family or friends. But, you know, decades later, I'm perusing Facebook, which wasn't even around back then, you know. And then now it was. And I see this name come up as somebody I might know. I don't know. How do they do that, Steve? I don't know. But anyway, um, I thought, that's the name of this guy that I prayed with, you know? I mean, it's, it's the same last name, and it's kind of a unique name, you know what I mean? So I messaged this guy. I said, by any chance, did you ever know, uh, and I gave the name, and he goes, yeah, that was my brother. And, and I said, wow, did you know that just before he, he, uh, he died, like a few weeks before, that, that I actually prayed with him and led him to Christ? And you know what? No one in the family even knew that he'd ever gotten saved. All they knew is that he was a drug addict, you know? And, and uh, here, here I told him that. He goes, my goodness. He goes, I got to tell my mom. Because here they were, there were people, I'm sure, praying for him. Praying for him. God will open doors. He'll pave ways. All right. So prayer, you know, it's your connection with God. I was thinking about prayer this week from the Jesus angle, you know. And if you've been around here long enough and in your own studies, I'm sure, um, you find that everywhere Jesus went, you know, the sick were being healed. 
Even, even uh, Jesus went over to Peter's house one time, and Peter's mother-in-law was there, had a headache, and she got healed. But what I was noticing this week is that Jesus didn't, I can't even find a place. Maybe there is. I'm not saying it isn't there, but just in the places I looked, I couldn't even see where Jesus ever prayed for the sick. What he did is he strengthened his connection continually with the Father. Every, every, I don't I'm not going to say every day. It's not like, it could be five times it. It could be every minute. But he walked his life with a connection with God, with heaven. And when that connection was strong, man, he could speak to fevers and say, fever, I command you to go. Or he probably was really cool. Fever, go. You know, we sometimes, we, get, we think we got to, make an emphasis or something, man, I tell you, it's not how loud you say it, it's, it's what comes from your heart. I was reading this, to kind of back this up in, in uh, Luke five sixteen. it says this, it said, he often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Another version said he'd often slip away in the wilderness and pray. What he'd do is he got away from the crowd and strengthened his connection. Strengthen his connection. You guys, you know, most of you use cell phones. Most people do. Um, the thing about cell phones is they're only as good as the bars that are showing. You know what I mean? Don't you hate it when you get down to one bar? Or you're off in the woods or something and you got no service? Or in the back of Walmart and you're trying to call your wife to see what... <laughs> I've found that in the yogurt section, if you lift your left leg and lean in, you can, you'll get a, a bar. <laughs> anyway. Prayer is keeping your bars up. Prayer is giving you the full coverage that you need. And when you've got that connection, you can go out and live supernaturally. You can go out and conduct kingdom business without a struggle. In Mark 1, verse 35, same thing. It says, Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Simon and those who were with him, they searched for him. So Jesus got up early, and he went and prayed. Now, let, don't get into a rut and say, Well, you know, the only time you can really do this is if you get up early. I beg to differ. Sometimes, man, my best praying has been when everybody's in bed, everybody's asleep, and I'm just laying there. The point of it isn't that you get up early or that you stay up late. The point of it is, is that you seek him. The point of it is, is that you stay connected with heaven. As we go into a new year, you know, I mean, again, I know the kind of people that are in this church. I know that we're not, we're not the norm. Do you know that? We're not the norm. Again, I hear preachers preaching and they say, oh, yeah, most Christians never have had a prayer answered. And I think, how insane. We see prayers answered every day. Every day. And again, I'm in this unique position where I hear your testimonies. And I hear mine, where God hears me. And he answers prayer. So, you know, I'm preaching to the choir, but the choir needs preaching to sometimes because we can let things slip. And we're stirring ourselves up today and saying, hey, I realize Communication with God is a strength. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beef it up, man. I'm not sitting back. I'm going forward. I'm walking with him. Thank you for listening to Liberty Christian Center's podcast. To partner with this ministry or for any additional information, please visit libertychristiancenter.org.